Hey students, this is just a quick review of your rational drug design um, section of the Outbreak booklet and the course. So just having a look, oops, that's there. just having a look at the um, study design dot point here. I'll just move it down. Concept of rational drug design in terms of the complementary nature. So the shape and the charge of small molecules that are designed to bind tightly to a target molecule in your context that is only applying to enzymes um, resulting in enzyme inhibition and giving rise to a therapeutic benefit so medicine um, illustrated by the Australian development of the antiviral drug Relenza as a neuraminidase inhibitor loads and loads of terms in there but if you can just use those terms in your responses then you're more than halfway there with this um, dot point. So just reminding you, what we're looking at here is neuraminidase. So the, the Relenza drug is designed to inhibit neuraminidase. And neuraminidase is one of the proteins on the outside of the influenza virus that um, cuts and releases the virus from the host cell or multiple hundreds, thousands of viruses from the host cell which are then free to go off and infect other cells. If you inhibit the neuraminidase, then it traps the virus, a bit like flypaper, onto the um, host cell, and those viruses are then not free to move on. Um, it's really one of the things about Relenza is that it is only effective in the very early days of treatment or in the early days of infection. So if you're very uh, deep into the influenza infection, and you've been showing symptoms for more than three or four days, then they're unlikely to prescribe Relenza because you've got so much circulating virus. Okay, um, So your immune system will overcome it more quickly than Relenza will be able to help. So this is administered in the early days of an infection. Um, so here, this is just a recap on the structure. And this shows you that we were looking at the H5N1. Will it zoom? There we go. H5N1. Um, strain of the influenza virus and here we've got the surface protein on the um, surface of your lung cells and the salic acid or sialic acid some people pronounce it um, which is actually the the protein that we are going to um, mimic okay so as part of this process the rational drug design process so you've got hemagglutinin attaching to your lung cells and then invading your lung cells and then when you cut that bond between the influenza virus and your lung cells what the neuraminidase does is it targets this sialic acid the purple blob here um, and it has an active site that actually fits that perfectly so that it actually can sever the virus from the cell and release it into your bloodstream Okay, so it's this molecule here that rational drug design has mimicked and it's targeted the shape and the charge of that molecule to produce a perfect inhibitor, almost, to this active site in your neuraminidase. So that's the target, neuraminidase, not hemagglutinin. So what we're doing is targeting the release rather than targeting attachment. Um, as part of the viral life cycle. So what they've done is investigate the active site and looked at the particular shape and the charge. Okay, so if you think about all this as proteins and R groups, we've got neutral, we've got um, positive, we've got negative charges on the inside of that neuraminidase active site. And that's what our drug needs to complement. Okay, so this is how the sialic acid binds to the neuraminidase and this shows you that sialic acid does complement the shape and the charge if I can zoom a little bit um, so what they needed to do was develop using molecular techniques not trial and error okay quick flash rational drug design does not use trial and error it's not um, testing lots of molecules to see what will fit it's using our understanding of biotechnology um, level of the molecules involved and actually designing something specific for it. So if you go to traditional drug design that would have been finding um, by chance often a drug or a medication that relieves symptoms or causes uh, improvement in 
in the disease state and then purifying that and using that as a medication. That's the opposite in rational drug design. Rational drug design is really developing an excellent understanding of the life cycle and of the virus in this case and then intervening, blocking some part of that life cycle with a very scientific and organized approach, understanding the molecular basis of, in this case, neuraminidase and its active site and what it binds to, and then designing something specifically that binds to that and blocks the action and therefore blocking the viral life cycle. So um, finding a potential inhibitor meant that we were um, the scientists were designing something based on this purple molecule here. Okay, um, and what you can see, so you were asked to to choose potential um, candidates for this, and they gave you different charges on the possible candidates, and asked you to work out which ones would fit most effectively. And what they came up with was um, the designed for Relenza. So Relenza is probably has a slightly better fit than, than the sialic acid, which you can see here, and effectively blocks these active sites and therefore keeps the virus trapped on the lung cell and prevents it from um, infecting other cells. So stops the disease in its tracks. Now what I really like about this course um, particularly this section of the course, is the way that the questions help you focus on the key information you need to know. So for a start, scientists targeted the neuraminidase, not the hemagglutinin, as part of this process. Um, they've targeted the active site of that enzyme, so neuraminidase, the A's part, tells you that it's an enzyme, and they've targeted the active site to block the action of that enzyme. Now question three is an excellent question because what it asks you to do is work out which of the following options is not a step in the rational drug design process. And by answering this question correctly, by selecting C, you can see that A, B and D describe the process really nicely and succinctly. Okay, The reason that C here is not true is because there's nothing random about rational drug design. Okay, It's not a trial and error process. It's a very systematic um, method, method. I can't say that word. It's completely gone out of my head. Um, really systematic approach to designing um, medications. Okay, that really use our scientific understanding and our molecular understanding of the pathogen and of the cells that is infecting to design a specific drug. Question four. Um, uh, they search for a molecule that was complementary to the active site in which way? Really important that you remember that the, the drug itself is has a complementary charge and shape to um, the enzyme. Okay, So it complements the enzyme and fits perfectly because of its shape and because of the charges. So we've talked about shape and conformation a lot when we've talked about enzymes, but here you need to mention the shape and the charge of that active site. Um, and here, how does it actually work? It reduces the rate at which influenza viruses are released from the infected cells. It doesn't boost your immune system. It doesn't kill the virus. It traps the virus on the lung cells. So what I'd like you to do is make sure that your answers are correct. Make sure that you understand um, what we want you to know in rational drug design. Potentially turn some of these questions into a short list of dot points. And then try and make an attempt on some of the VCAR questions at the end here. Well done.